free. All right, well, it is day one, minute seven. Yeah, maybe. Minute seven into the hunt. And uh, Mr. Brad Hunt here just spotted a group of elk up on this hill with a good bull. At least he thinks there's a good bull there. I can see the sun shining on it, so I know he's a good bull. <laughs> he's a six point. I have a tag. Brad has a tag. Archery elk. Season just started. For Season us. just started. <laughs> yep. And we got Trevor Call on the other on the camera here. Yes, sir. My cousin. And uh, we're gonna try to film this thing. Good bull already. Let's do this. Well, we watched those elk come off the top and join the bull and go into that timber thicket. Looks like a nice bull. I like where he's at. There's a lot of open country between the top and that timber thicket where they could probably see us approaching. We really won't know what to do till we get over there and look. But we'll have the wind in our favor. We'll get above them and we'll see if we can work our way in. Hopefully they're distracted. Maybe the bull gets up runs around when we get between him and the cows. Whatever the case is, we gotta get ourselves over there first. We're uh, pulling this hill. It's a lot longer and steeper than it looks. But uh, we're right about here to this peak right here and we gotta go around it get to the top and then we can walk the ridge over to that bull put some glass on him kill him hey Brian yeah how old are you? 46 almost are you sure? <laughs> I'm dying trying to keep up with you <laughs> and I'm not even keeping up <laughs> this is tough stuff well we've got a new hunter here a new uh, backpack hunter here with Trevor, cousin Trevor. And uh, we're gonna try to make sure his feet don't get all blistered up. So we're gonna uh, get some sock liners out and see if those can keep the blisters at bay. How are we looking? Yeah, we're not too bad. This is all normal. Okay. Throw that sucker on. Oh yeah. Typically what happens is this will get all that sweat like right off your foot. It'll wick it away and put it on the sock, which will help a lot with the rubbing. Yeah. And uh, what happens is, is instead of your skin sliding against that outer sock, the sock, the sock liner rub up against it and it'll save on that friction. And you should feel a difference pretty quick here climbing these hills. Brad can wear cotton socks like my wife. No problem, no sweat. No sock liners. I have, what is it? Hyper hydrolysis? Yeah. Or hydrosis? Hyper hydrosis. What is that? And you have super sweaty feet and hands. Her feet. Yeah, those are nice and wet. Yeah. I love it. Okay. So she's got going. That should help quite a bit. Man, you make me feel like a pan. up here but we got ourselves up here to the top and uh, the elk are off this bluff down this ridge and then off the bluff we're gonna walk this ridge and we're gonna peek over where the saddle is where where they came over the top the herd elk came over the top we're gonna get on this rock bluff and then look down we should have good visibility of both where they crossed and the timber thicket that they're bedded in. Hopefully we can put eyes on them. Wind seems to be pretty good, it's in our face. And as long as we stay above them, I think we're good. But we just gotta make our way to this bluff and then maybe uh, take a little break and again and set up on them for a while and see what they're doing. We uh, found some water up higher than we expected, which is really nice. And just had a spike that was bedded in it. So that's kind of comforting that there's water right there. 
that's not a bad little jaunt if we have to come back to it. So, and there may be more on this other side. But, yeah, he's smart, cooling off. I'm about to do, go do the same, because it's a little warm out here. <sighs> little update, we made our trek over here. We got plenty of water, and uh, got to our point, looked over the other side, and there's a ton of elk. What do we got, like? Couple different herds, big herds, Probably. big bull. But that's probably you don't think that's the herd that you were watching over here. So Not there's long. another herd right here. Down here this bottom. Mm. So it's really hot. We threw up my ground cloth, which converts into a sunshade or a rain tarp. Either way, everybody ought to have a Cuban fiber ground cloth slash tarp slash shelter slash I just shade. Got, I just got to tie back up cheap right now. It, it does the job, but it's like 10 by 10. We probably should have put it up. Yeah, Brad's got the Tyvek going. I did that for years. I've actually had this tarp for 10 years at least, I think. It's been, it's been nice. It'll keep you from getting sunburned. Anyway... We got a few hours to kill right here. I'm gonna try to take a nap because I'm beat. And then uh, when they start screaming, hopefully we get some action. Most likely we won't have anything venture up this high before dark or right where we're at, but we're gonna, we, who knows, we, we are next to a great saddle. A couple great spots where these elk were this morning, but we're gonna do our best not to blow them out just keep an eye on them and wait for a good opportunity rather than just rush in on the first chance we get but it's easier said than done we'll we'll see what happens hopefully we get some action that bull is way out there on that ridge line i can see that i can see the silhouettes even though i mean how many yards is that it's got to be four thousand 3,000 yards? That's why we love those skylines. I spot the tough ones. The skylines, they're tough to spot. Here about 2.25 miles as the crow flies probably. Maybe a little more. Dude, we could be there in like 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Well, kicked out a few uh, beds here on the mountain, and we are um, going to sleep right here, have a little dinner, and then uh, we like where we're at. We only got like a day, day's worth of food, but we do have access to water right here, which isn't too far. For all we know, in the morning, they'll be right here on this ridge we're on. We saw them here this morning from way, way over there. But uh, if not, and they're still over here on this side, we'll probably run the ridge, get above them, and get on them in the afternoon. And uh, the thermals have been real good, blowing hard uphill. So looking pretty good, though. It's not a... Uh, you know, we've been doing a lot of hiking, a lot of glassing, a lot of chasing, but haven't really got into any position where we're after a big herd bull. But um, eventually, you and the elk are in the same spot at the right time. And you get your chance. So that's what we're banking on. So we're having a little coconut curry chicken, and quinoa, and yellow squash. My wife Suzanne, she's made the, uh, she dehydrated these meals I'm using this old Heather's Choice breakfast that I ate the other day using her little meal pouch. Add hot water, seal it up, and then the other break, the other meal. Trevor's gonna eat this one tonight. This one is millet, brown rice, ramen, and veggies. And uh, 
It's got squash, Suzanne's like bouillon, homemade bouillon. And uh, I don't know, it's tasty. So I had this last night. Trevor's gonna try this, so I'm gonna have quinoa tonight. But um, I usually try to bring my own meals, about probably 60 or 70% of my own stuff, and then I mix it up with a little bit of Heather's Choice or Off Grid or something like that. There's a couple meals that they both make that I really like. I could eat Heather's Choice salmon chowder every night, though. I really like that one. But for tonight, this is what we're having. One thing about the ramen, the rice noodles, it can take a little longer to cook. Cheap ramen cooks quick. Healthier ramen doesn't cook too quick. Trevor, we're gonna have to get your reaction on this meal. Let's see what you think of it. Yeah, no the quinoa, the quinoa chicken, it's curry, it's okay. But I like this one. Of course, I like the veggies and the chestnuts. And But I don't know, man. We got elk on this. 
this ridge, on the ridge we're on, but we got more elk on the opposite ridge, but there's almost so many elk over there. We need him to bunch up if we're not gonna get busted. Yeah, and this bull's a good enough bull that I will shoot him. So, hopefully when these thermals change, those that guy keeps pushing him this way, because we're set up, we can drop off whichever side we need to. Once that wind changes where that bull goes. So. Yeah, so we're gonna sit tight. We're ready to run if we need to. But uh, it'd be fun to film that too. It's a good morning so far. We just need this wind to switch and we can start moving. It should switch any time. Yeah. Could be even switched down there already. Yeah, right. Where that sun is hitting. So we've got a small five. He might be like a small six, but they're probably only about 250 yards, 300 yards. They just crested over this little saddle. So we're hoping the wind will switch real soon so it doesn't blow them out. But and it should, but we're just not in the best spot right now for these elk anyway. But again, we got lots of other elk, so we should be okay. This bull, he's, he's right at that size where he's like looking over his shoulder constantly, making sure there's not a bigger bull. <laughs> it's gonna take all his cows. And he's pushing them pretty hard so he can keep them away from other bulls. But our wind is not good. Still at our back, blowing right to him. It's going across. No, it's not. Stick it out in front of you. Okay. It's blowing. It, it's now not blowing exactly to them. It's blowing off to the side. This could get fun though. Brad is not allowed to shoot this bull. No, he's not big enough. Years past, I'd already be down there ready to smoke him, but I've got days this year, so I'm like, nah, I gotta hold off for a good bull. Cause like last year I hunted a day and a half for myself and, and got a, a pretty nice five, but there's a lot bigger bulls in here that we could have opportunities at, so it's just cool to watch. But yeah, he's definitely not a mature bull by any means. down here that are bedded and then we have a bull that's off this bluff so Brad and I are gonna run and gun this edge this is this uh, ridge get above him and then hopefully he's still there we get on him Over here, 
about 150. Just trying to pinpoint right where he's at.
pull out of here. I had him at 40 yards. The more I sat there and looked at him, I was like, ah, uh, he's nothing bigger than I haven't already shot, which I said my goal this year was to shoot a much bigger bull, at least a herd bull than I've ever shot. And I sat there and I was like, so I was like, okay, here's the deal. I'm at 40 yards, Brian's got the camera. I'm gonna cow cough. It's meant to be, he'll stand up broadside. <laughs> Within that 40, 60 yards, I'm good to go. Right off the bat without moving any sights or anything. And so, Cal called a couple times and he kind of popped his head up. And then when he came up and wasn't facing me or broadside and just kind of went away, I was like, okay, there's my answer. He uh, wasn't meant to be, but it would have been sweet. But again, my goal has been this year, since I have the days, I want to kill a big herd bull, so. He's a great bull. Yeah. But you, we still have 10, 12 days, maybe longer if we have to. So. Right. Who wants it to end this early? But man, that was cool. <laughs> it's, it's good to get the. A little practice. It's good to get the first, cause like right off the bat, I was a little nervous, which I usually stay pretty calm. But again, it's the first of the year. The second time I drew him, I'm like, yeah, that sucker is dead if he stands broadside, let off. And the third time I drew on him when he got up, I drew and it's like, okay, if he stops, he's dead for sure. But nice and calm. Nice and calm. I was, yeah. I was solid. Well, I'm dying of thirst uh, out here. Me too. It's hot. All that adrenaline, cotton mouth. <laughs> I get know. cotton mouth bad. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, oh, let's get on out of here. That was freaking sweet. Now we just need to find another, a bigger bull. Yeah, we plotted this on on X, and we pretty much put the X right where he was at. Uh, my ex was like right about about where you were sitting mm -hmm. so it's a little lower 40 yeah. yards lower but just by using the terrain and the and the uh, satellite imagery plotted him out and then came off this ridge it worked perfectly so and the other thing is is what I do feel really really good about is we don't have to pack him out of this hill hole because <laughs> it's straight up no matter where you go to get out it's straight up from here but that was fun. That was a good stock. Glad to finally get one in for the year. Yeah. In the palm of your hand, brother. <laughs> I know. But again, like I said, I'm like, okay. Because yeah. normally, here's my situation. Normally, I would sit there and I would wait till that bull gets up 100% of the time. I will not make him get up. I want him to get up on his own time. Because he's going to get up, he's going to stretch, and that gives you an opportunity to draw and smoke him. And so when I was like, okay, here, this is if it's meant to be. I'll cow call, and if he stands up right there, then I'll take it. But as you can see, it wasn't meant to be. Keep on hunting. All right, let's rock. All right, thanks for watching this week's show. We hope you really liked it. You better. Uh, cut off for it. Yeah, so <laughs> it was steep country, very steep. There's lots more to come. I think you're going to like it. But uh, how about Brad passing on that bull? <laughs> what, what do you think i mean uh i have no comment to be made <laughs> i you know i respect a man's decision i will not judge someone i will whether they're gonna pull the trigger or not okay? I, 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 See, no i was i, I was like i don't say a thing are you, <laughs> you you i mean i i held it together a little bit you know i filmed brad and let him just you know do his thing but yeah i was like hey dude <laughs> if you're gonna pass on a bull like that with your bow then how about you give me the bow and you grab the camera Okay, mm -hmm. because these things are a gift. You know, having that bull bedded like it was and to sneak down and the wind was good, no other elk in the way. I mean, it was it was a real gift. And uh, But Brad did have goals for a bigger bull. He, we, Brad we, has killed a lot. People should know. Brad has killed 17 or 18 bulls. Yeah, yeah. But nothing like really big. And well, he's was, killed a couple big bulls. Uh -huh. But out of all of those bulls, like two out of 17, something like that. We could be totally wrong. And, but it's, a, it's not very many because mm -hmm. Brad goes out and he just fills the freezer, kills the, the, one of the first he's bulls he gets. He's a weekend warrior slayer type guy. And he really wanted this time to just get something big. That was big though. Yeah. And... We were yeah. taking turns, right? Right, right, right? And so it was like, <laughs> I'll film you and then you film me. And uh -huh. I would have loved to see him close to like five yards or 10 yeah. yards or something. Just get that, right, like as close as so you could like stick it with a stick or something, the arrow, you know, tip uh -huh. or something, something like that. But anyway, it was, uh, it's a, it was a, a physically demanding hunt. And I've said this before, I dropped a podcast two or three days ago 
about not calling elk. And you notice mm-hmm. on this film so far, there's no real elk calling. It's all kind of spot and stock. Go listen to that podcast if you're interested. I'm I'm a big fan of this kind of hunting for elk, especially on public land, especially where it's over the counter. Elk are not – a lot of elk, I feel, are educated on the calling thing. And mm-hmm. I feel like if you really want to target an older age class bull, it's better off not calling at all. That's my opinion, especially in open country. Everything changes when you're in thick, dense country. You almost need calling to find stuff because you can't see it with your eyes. But as you can tell, in places like this, people don't want to go because it's straight up and straight down, vertical. But you can see forever. You guys saw, what, four herds from one sitting point? Oh, we saw hundreds of elk. Every mountaintop you go to, they're miles away, Mm -hmm. but they're everywhere. And you can see them. They're there and nobody's really pressuring them much because most people feel like they need llamas or horses or mules or something to get back into a place like that or get an animal packed out. And I've talked about that too. I'm a big fan of, of taking four or five days to pack an animal out if I need to. 100 pounds per day, four days in a row, and I'm, I'm done, you know. Or <laughs> eat a llama. And you take one <laughs> we trip. are working on that. And we should say right now, we, we told you we were going to deliver a, a bear hunting, grizzly bear, like a black bear, llama adventure. Uh-huh. But we switched it out for the elk hunt mm-hmm. because... It is the season. It is the season. And also, we didn't... We, we had this edit kind of further along. Mm-hmm. And uh, I actually got a house and I'm moving and we're in the middle of boxes being we're loaded. We're moving. Yeah. So it's been a little crazy. So... We decided to uh, to go ahead and and do the elk series first, so we got two more parts, and then How we'll moved get are you, and then we'll get. <laughs> I'm not even half. Yeah, we're. Like, I got a U-Haul out front, and it's halfway f- filled right now, and I've been yeah. packing for a few days while I'm trying to finish the edits and stuff for the week and keep the show rolling. So wow. that's the situation. Anyway, tune in next Sunday. We're gonna do another two parts of this elk series. Then we're gonna go into the the black bear. Um, Red Lightning, Chocolate 2.0 kind of series. So we think you'll, we'll th- we think you're gonna like it all. So tune in. But right now it's it is elk season. So I felt felt kind of compelled to get the archery footage out the door and the and the elk hunting footage out the door, as everybody's thinking about that right now. And that's kind of everybody's doing their prep. And I'm throwing my um, my uh, you know my opinion out there <laughs> on you know try maybe not calling elk this year. Yeah. All right. We have a giveaway for leaving a comment on this video. So if you liked it and you want to leave a comment, you're entered to win, like and subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate uh, subscribe you guys subscribing to the channel, leaving comments, and all that engagement helps our channel grow. And the giveaways are just kind of icing on the cake. It's fun for us to do it, and it creates some community with you all, and we really enjoy doing it. And it gives us a chance to talk about some stuff that we're really excited about as well. And one of those things is Stealthy Nutrition. And for those that don't know, Ryan and Hillary have been building a a little uh, like nutrition complex, Hunt Harvest Health, where they have all sorts of products that are available to help you uh, supplements and food, backpacking food on the site that will help you win in the mountains and end in life. And so we are going to do a $50 gift, gift card to Stealthy Nutrition. And we have the website linked below. In the description field, you can check that out. But over there, you can get some uh, tr- mango macadamia trail mix. Uh, that's also it's made by Off Grid, but in partnership with Stealthy. Also, mountain mush oatmeal, pineapple coconut. One of Ryan's. These are kind of mm-hmm. Ryan's recipes, Lampers recipes. You can get those through the Stealthy, Stealthy Nutrition website. Um, but the winner, uh, whoever leaves a comment, we pick, you get a $50 gift card over there. There's also bone broth, protein, e-charge, um, electrolytes we're using in the mountains, got lots of gut health supplements and some CBD oil products as well. Gummies, tincture, gut restore, GI tract restore, like just so many good stuff. So and it's continuing to grow. So check out the Stealthy Nutrition supplements and page if you're interested. If you're looking for some trail mix, some mountain mush breakfast uh, put on by Ryan, go check that out. And um, use the code GRITTY and you'll get a discount when you go over there. And leave a comment and you're entered to win a $50 gift card. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, it supports supports Ryan and Hillary and what they're doing. It supports the Gritty 
gritty show. It's just great all the way around. Everybody wins. It's pretty cool. Now, we are also doing a giveaway uh, for sharing this film on Instagram. And we're going to do Peaks trekking poles, some sissy sticks. That's what we're going to give away this week. So share, just take, just take a screenshot or a, you know, copy the link or whatever. Put it on your Instagram story or your feed. Tag Ryan and I in there. Brian call, Brian underscore call or Stealthy Hunter. And uh, we'd like to reshare those on our own page mm-hmm. throughout the week too, especially some of the cooler and funnier ones or just get a, creative. It's just really cool to have that. And so if you share that there, uh, we're going to pick someone like we, like we've done this week and we're going to give away a pair of peaks trekking poles. And if you haven't checked out peaks, you can go to peaks and there's gators, poles, Spoons. titanium spoons some other stuff i Maybe feel like some those spoons just they're just left in the dark no one talks about hats them. and shirts there's some cool stuff and uh peaks is owned by bryce bishop it continues to grow he's a, he's a good dude and uh he's making some great trekking poles the upper half is carbon uh, fiber and the lower half is aluminum you can see we beat the crap out of mm. these things we use them to pitch our our tarps we use them to climb the mountains. I mean, it's just, I don't know. I can't imagine hunting nowadays. And you see where we're at without trekking poles. They're just kind of a must. And um, we're using them to prop up shelters and and tarps and everything. So check those guys out for your trekking pole needs and uh, use the code gritty there. And the gators are legit Uh, made with, I mean, we have beat the crap out of these. We've taken them the distance We have tried to destroy them. The fit and feel is excellent. The durability is excellent. I'd stack the Peaks Gator up against any Gator on the market. So check that out at, like I said, peaksequipment.com. But uh, share, and you'll be entered to win a pair of trekking poles. Share on Instagram. Okay, last week, we said we'd give away a set of Mountain Ops flash bags. We're going to tell you who that winner is right now. And uh, Brent, go ahead and pull up the winner. The the um, the bags, if you guys don't know, Mountain Ops came out with what they call flash bags. They're like pullouts. They're they're they help you organize all your gear and your stuff inside your backpack, in your top lid, where whatever you need. And uh, they come in different sizes, little zips, and they're they're pretty nice bags. And uh, you can get those at MountainOps.com. Use the code Gritty. But we picked a winner, and that winner is Jonathan Gates. Okay. Congrats, Jonathan. Jonathan says, you say you don't like the iPhone content, but honestly, I had no clue of the quality (laughs) difference. Great film. Thank you. Uh, The footage, you know, we made the iPhone footage work. Tons of people said we liked it better than the other footage. No. That cuts deep, fellas. No. Uh, Especially when we're carrying all this stuff and then these little tiny phones. But actually, um, it did turn out pretty good. I I was very happy with it. I had to do some. Um, I had to do a lot of uh, learning that week to figure out how to convert. I because it is 4K footage, mm-hmm. how to convert it into footage that matches the other film that we're producing. So you can't tell. Oh, total phone, the rest, and blend it, and really pull out the colors and mm-hmm. the sharpness so that you could really have a good viewing experience. It was. It took yeah. some doing. Because if you put the two raw videos right next to each other, they look completely different. They were, oh yeah, they were not the, gonna. Y- no. And then the kill shot as well. Like we, there's a lot that Brent and I have learned through, through self teaching and lots of YouTube videos on how to make video look good. And we did a good job. It turned out okay. So we're also going to give away a bonus round for a bonus round. Uh, we picked two people who shared on it on YouTube. We're going to give away a, uh, a tub of ignite to Dan Shao S H A O. Okay. Do you did it a little, little bit. Man can't read. I know. Do you do the dishes in the mountain after boiling all the bear grease slash all the lard in the container? I always find it a chore to wash the, the container, not to mention the amount of water it takes to completely get rid of the food grease. No, we don't do dishes. <laughs> no. <laughs> Could have told you that. No, we don't do dishes. Uh, we just use a little toilet paper. You bring toilet paper for your, you know, uh, your, yeah. your bathroom needs. And there, we bring enough that you can just wipe out a pot if you need to. It's a nonstick surface coming out of all those like backcountry mm-hmm. pots, those jet yeah. boils. Just you take your, your, your toilet paper and you just kind of wipe it out. It's biodegradable. Generally, you can just, mm-hmm. you know, it'll just disintegrate 
you can throw it on the yeah. ground. You can burn it. It's toilet paper. Um, and you just wipe it out. You just wipe out the pot. That's all you need to do. If I have some chopped ramen or something and I don't want my oatmeal in the morning to taste like ramen or something like that, I just I just wipe it out when I'm done. But uh, no, we don't really use water and we never use soap. Um, and we, we're nowhere near water most of the time, like at night. And so we don't, we don't wash. So you could just bring a little thing of soap. Right? We do not. Just we lick it clean. We Ew. lick it clean. You guys do. You guys are gross. There you is. <laughs> savages. It's a lot of like, you. Like, it's not a big deal. No. Uh, so we. Um, congratulations there. Now we said we'd give away three tubs of ignite for someone who shared our, our video on their Instagram. And that winner is Oler outdoors. Love this color phase that Adam Weatherby got in this film. Just a, just a tank of a bear. Also thrilled that the Rebecca Ruth Mm -hmm. was the one to have the video up and run ready this morning. (laughs) sounds like maybe his wife or something Mm -hmm. got it up and on the TV, right at morning, right at daylight. So that's cool. Uh, we really appreciate the support, guys. All of you that share and promote our, our content and that tell us that you like it, that leave comments, that engage with us. Um, we can't thank you enough. And we just are so, we just really enjoy producing these shows and then engaging and hearing back from everybody. It's really cool. Mm-hmm. It really makes this worth it, you know, and fun to do. So if you want to win, like I said, this week, a pair of sissy sticks, share on Instagram. If you want to win a $50 gift card to Stealthy Nutrition, uh, leave us a comment on this video. Like, subscribe, share this video. And we are in the midst of doing an Initial Ascent backpack giveaway. I've actually got mine back here. Mm. I I took it apart because I was doing a, a live stream. On our locals last night with the guys from Initial Ascent. Ryan, what's locals? But that's part of this giveaway. If you, um, for those that don't know, we have created a, a an online community mm-hmm. called uh, the Gritty Stealthy Community at locals.com. And it's an app. You can download it from the app store. You can do interact through a web interface as well. But over there, we are doing live stream podcasts. Uh, we are producing exclusive podcast contents for that community only. And we're also uh, publishing film that's exclusive to that community as well. And a lot of that content you can access for free. You just go over there, become a member, and you have full full access to tons of tons of things. But if you want to become a paying subscriber, supporter of the, uh, of the community, it's $5.88 a month if you, if you purchase the full year all at once. And with that, you get to interact, get all access to all that exclusive content. You're entered to win an initial ascent backpack, which we're giving away on August 1st. And it's just a really cool group of people. And on there, it's, it's actually kind of our replacement for Instagram, Facebook, and all the communist, uh, fascistic mm-hmm. type of social Socialist media outlets media. out there right now. You know, it's really ticking us off all this censorship, um, all the all the suppression that's going on this week. Instagram did this whole you know sensitive content uh, thing where they basically rolled out your, on your new update on your app this sensitivity content button setup, which mm-hmm. was preset to limited to restrict things like a kill shot or something mm-hmm. because uh, it's sensitive content. So hunting content is right there on that chopping block as sensitive Mm -hmm. for sure. And so if you've noticed a decline in your traffic or what you're seeing through your account, you probably need to go into your account and your settings and take off sensitive content and say, allow. We're not about that. We have created this community over at Locals and it's pretty cool. We can share whatever we want over there. And we have tons of people posting and sharing and engaging and posting uh, questions and hunt pictures and everything else. It's a young community. We've just started it three months ago, but it continues to grow. It's getting bigger and bigger every week. And I can't thank everyone enough because people who do support us directly, like I said, you can get access to it without being um, a paying person. But the people who are, you've really helped us become far more independent and less, less dependent on corporate sponsors than we've ever been. Again, if you want to be entered to win an initial ascent pack, become a member, become a supporter right away. 
And you, all you got to do is go to gritty.locals.com. And over there, you can access like six films, I think, now that are exclusive mm -hmm. to just people who are members over there. So there's lots of content, film content to keep you busy. And then there's lots of live streams. We do live stream every Monday and Thursday. And it's pretty cool. We get lots of uh, chit-chatting going on with the community. And it's a, it's a neat place to be. So check that out, folks. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for supporting our work. We can't, we can't thank you enough. Yeah, thank you. And uh, until next time, stay gritty. <laughs>